What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. For those of y'all that don't know, unfortunately, I went to prison two times in my life over here in the great state of Virginia. And that's where we're traveling today, Virginia's finest, maximum security lockdown, the Red Onion. This is one of the most secure prisons in Virginia and probably in the top 10 for the whole country. Of course, there's other parts of the prison where people get a little more movement than others, but this is some drive your ass insane type of maximum security. And you know, a lot of people think that it's just killers for the most part that go to these places, but it's not. Assaulting a correctional officer pretty bad can land you in the onion easily. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump right into Virginia's finest maximum security prison. Despite participating in the step-down program, some prisoners are considered too dangerous to return to general population. These offenders are um, extremely dangerous offenders. They are very violent and have been very violent. If you were to see this guy, even though he's got some tattoos and shit, he doesn't look too damn scary or violent, does he? I don't know what this guy did. He could have killed 18 people or he could have just gotten into a bunch of fights and the last fight he got into, he stabbed someone. Like we just read, there's a step down program. Usually if you don't get no trouble for a certain amount of time, you take a step down. Then they go a little longer and they go down another step until the facility thinks that they're good enough to go to general population. Also, you got to keep in mind, a lot of people love this lifestyle. No one in the cell with them. They're just going to do their time back there alone. Nice and safe. You know, a lot of people become violent just to get to a cell like this. So when it comes down to those guys, there is a lot of risk involved with them. But through the program, these offenders have jobs rolling what we call plastic wire. Plastic wire. With good behavior, the most these prisoners can earn is the opportunity to work outside their cells twice a week. One of the finest amenities to the onion. With good behavior, they'll let you out yourself for about 30 minutes to wrap some silverware. Just to be delivered back to you to unwrap and eat with. Shit, I wrapped this one, I could tell. But these guys are in the maximum of max. And I can guarantee that's probably the highlight of their day going out there wrapping up a little bit of plastic silverware. Gravy was just nothing but water, dude. That's all it was, man. Mm -hmm. I like this. I like the map. See where the water. I don't touch the map. Is that you know the movie uh, Need for Speed? Yeah. Is that Jesse from Breaking Bad? Yeah. That's what it I thought is. he was, man. It yeah, is. I, I recognized him. Yeah. Like, what's that one with Lucy Lou? Man? Oh, that's elementary. But they got this new show coming on ABC, I believe, Endgame or something, dude. It looked really cool. Mind games. Mind games. That's it. Yeah. It looked kind of cool. Christian Slater. Man. Oh, never mind. Yeah, I have Christian Slater in it. <laughs> Fuck that, never mind. You're probably asking yourself how the hell these guys are on lockdown 24 damn 7 know about these new movies. Well, even in the most secure prisons, they play movies on the weekend. Tune in with your radio, I don't know what the hell you do if you ain't got no TV back there. Damn. I wonder if they got some kind of like uh, TV in the hallway so people can look out their cell or something. That, that'd be counsel before the end of the season. Out here working, we can talk to each other about things on the TV and stuff like that. That's good. That's one hell of a security booth right there. You know you made it to the big times when there's only four of you out there in a damn pod and they're still staring at you with a gun. Hey, believe it or not, guys that are just visiting this place and have to live through this type of lifestyle, man, that really boosts up their ego. For those gangster gangsters out there, man, this is like the damn apex. But the truth and reality of it is anybody can do it. <laughs> you can see old man Rogers right here folding up damn silverware doing it right now. But we're still wearing shackles. We're still putting handcuffs. We still got guards with vests escorting damn, him around. That was, that was a weird looking shackle. Almost like it's got a damn computer chip in it. But those blue Jackie Chans, I know all too well. You know, I want to get out of say. There's got to be a way out. Close 14! Stop getting in trouble, fool. Man, I got in a lot of trouble in prison. I didn't land over there. But at the same time, some guys, if they uh, committed some pretty heinous crimes on the streets and they got a lot of time to do, they'll throw them in here for the first 10 years of their sentence. So this guy might not have gotten in any trouble at all behind bars. Maybe he just has to sit back there because that's how he was classified. And the monotony on the same thing over and over and over and over and over again messes with your mind. Like when I first come to segregation, 
I didn't really have no problems. I was just angry. But after I stayed in SEG so long, being isolated, it turned me worse. I had to go to the psychiatrist, get medication. Like when, whenever I don't take my medication, I cut on myself. It cuts all over myself. People that like to cut themselves and lock up, I never understood it. There's two types of cutters in prison. One, he will cut himself for attention just to get out the cell, go to medical, see some girls. Two, he has some kind of mental instability where cutting seems like the best idea at the moment. But there are some people out there with those kind of conditions. You know, I watched a movie, I can't remember what it was called, but uh, I think it was about, it was like some kind of group home or something with people, all kinds of weird conditions. And one of them was a cutter. Another person was like bulimic or something like that. Bulimic, is that even a word? Maybe it was anorexic. Now that I'm thinking about it, what the hell is bulimic? Anyways, man, all kinds of conditions and stuff. So cutters, man, they're all over the place and lock up. His shackles are different. Regular cuffs. Look, I got two life sentences without the possibility of parole. So I'm in prison for the rest of my life. Dang. But I want to go home. I want to go home. That's all I want. I want to go home. You got some appeals you know, jumping? You ask a lot of these dudes, man, if they can go home, what do they want? Oh, they want cars, they want houses, they want all these girls and Kim Kardashian and, and screw all that. I just want a good job. I'd love to have a wife, a couple of kids, and a dog. That's all I want out of life. I was expecting him just to say freedom. He said a wife, a couple labs, white picket fence, and a suburban. 2022. Unless he's got some appeals in there, I don't know what the hell he's thinking. He ain't never leaving. I screwed up. I ain't blaming my parents or whatever. I did what I did. I accept responsibility for it. And if I got to spend the rest of my life in prison, then I'm gonna suck it up and deal with it. That's the only thing I can do. Either that or kill myself, and I'm too much of a coward to myself. Turn on the TV, kick back, and relax. Right here, it looks like he has some books or something, maybe in a bag to lift weights with. Got a nice little arm bar here to do dips on, and he has a window with some light coming through. I like to say this is a halfway decent cell, and you're alone? Shit, skimmy canteen, I could bid all day back there. Doritos, Pop-Tarts. American History X chain. He gotta watch Lockdown 23 and 1, man. Rocking that homage jank like old death, but you gotta get that six o'clock shadow on that mustache, man. And I start working out. And I'll work out for at least, uh, at least four hours. Sneaking cyborg. And I try to do that to where I'm so exhausted that I don't start dwelling on despair. Mm. You have to internalize it, and then after internalizing so much, you know, the mind's funny. Lars is his name. He's kind of like someone out of a video game. You meet in prison, you're like, what's your name? Lars, how are you? You gotta feel like you're relevant to somebody. You know, if you don't feel like you're relevant to nobody in that cell, then it'll make you want to just lose your damn mind yeah. you know just go crazy you gotta feel like you're relevant but what that guy said is absolutely right you know uh the majority of us in prison just want to feel relevant want to feel like someone still cares about us and believe it or not a lot of people go back to prison because they're only relevant in there Cell 420, baby. You know it's jumping in there. I remember when I started, I didn't feel like I knew what I was doing or anything. I was uh, 20 years old, and I was just walking around doing a check. Look, he's not wearing a vest, so this got to be like a lower security pod. No vest action, and it's a little more louder, as you can tell. People screaming, acting up a little bit. They're on like the last phase of their step down or something. I'm not sure. I didn't feel like I knew what I was doing or anything. I was uh, 20 years old, and... I was just walking around doing a check. 
and looking into a cell, and we had a guy, he was in cell 10, um, who had uh, bitten a hole in his arm. And he was, I remember stopping and looking at it and being like, you know, I was in shock, you know? I didn't really, I didn't know what I got myself into, to be honest with you. And my first reaction, I turned like, I turned sheet white. I was, I was freaked out. And uh, he just kind of looked at me, you know, and he said, I'd be like, man, you're damn losing it, you damn idiot. Told these guys to hurry up with their fucking trays. Now they're eating their arm and shit. Medical. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. Please don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button if you did. I know I talked a lot in this one, but that's just how it goes sometimes over here. Prayers go out to anybody that's locked up in that damn onion. They shouldn't be.